So what does vegetable oil and this smoker have in common? Stay tuned and find out. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Glad you could stop by. This is where backyard cooking is king. We take you on interesting faraway barbecue crawls to some fantastic joints and restaurants. And we introduce you to some great backyard cooking recipes. All right, so many of you are gonna ask, what's with the vegetable oil on the smoker? Well, besides the benefits of seasoning the inside of your pit, especially a brand new pit or one that's just been recently cleaned, uh, it goes without saying that for those who love cast iron and swear by it, uh, a good seasoned cast iron skillet's gonna last for decades, if not forever. Uh, and if treated right, it's never gonna rust on you. It's gonna have an impervable, uh, I don't even know that's the word, but it's going to have a non-stick surface that's really bulletproof, great to cook on, easy to clean, and if you just take care of it with a few easy steps, that skillet's going to last for decades. So we're going to do something really similar to the outside of this Yoder Wichita loaded offset smoker. There's a lot of other channels uh, that will show you the benefits of oiling the outside of your pit. Um, I'm taking my cue from a few manufacturers. One is Fat Stack Smokers and Primitive Pits. They do all their brand new pits, or the majority of them, with some kind of vegetable oil coating on the outside. Now granted, these pits are uh, made out of used propane tanks generally, and, and they have a little bit of wear and, and discoloration anyway, so it really helps right from the get-go to preserve those pits on the outside. My odor here has already seen one season here in coastal California where uh, salt air and, and the uh, elements really start to, to wear at it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prep this pit for some exterior seasoning and then we're going to fire it up and, and bake it in and cure that outside coating. All right, it might be kind of hard to see but uh, on my firebox here there's a lot of this uh, flaking of, of paint going on here and uh, it's exposing some of the metal the raw metal that's underneath and uh, you know I've, I've been touching this up with some high heat paint uh, the paint that Yoder sent with the pit and also some Rust-Oleum 2000 degree engine heat and it's still going to burn off especially this firebox um, once that uh, metal uh, and contracts so many times this paint's going to bubble off and just come off and you lose that paint and any protective coating that the steel came with you're basically opening up your pit to rust and I don't need to tell you guys that rust is bad um, so basically I'm just taking this dry side of a uh, scotch bright and I'm just kind of going around to get the flakes off the uh, big chips and uh, anywhere I see some cracks and chipping. Um, you know, I'm not going to uh, steel wool it. I'm not going to go down to the bare metal. I don't want to mess with the surface of the metal. Um, the oil will take care of that. So I'm just getting the big chunks off at this point. And um, so I'm just going to go around the whole pit and, uh, and do this. All right, like I said, I'm going to go over the whole pit with this uh, Brillo pad, scotch Bright. It's dry, and I'm just gonna look for any flaking paint, any obvious chunks, dirt, you know, get rid of it all, and then we'll go right into oiling it. There we go, guys. Got a nice uh, even coating uh, pretty much uh, all over the pit. Uh, went down the legs. Uh, pay close attention to underneath uh, both chambers. Um, all the welds, all the hinges, even the smokestack, even where the smokestack pivots. Uh, you want to definitely uh, try to get that. Um, the uh, Definitely right around where the thermometers are at. Um, you know, basically everything, the handles, uh, you name it. Um, 
Might even be easier if you get some spray oil. Uh, I wiped it down with lint-free cloth. Um, just did just as good. Um, you know, you could spray it down, then just wipe it down afterwards. Now, like I said, I'm going to get the pit uh, up to um, 350 degrees surface temperature on the metal. So I got my laser thermometer, and I'll be checking the surface of even the cook chamber. So um, I'm going to be going really hot. Um, I got my chimney over there, uh, somewhere over there, and I'm going to put the charcoal in there and then some logs. Um, a little quick view of the back. This is really where my problem area was and I'm really expecting the, uh, the oil to bond with the metal, uh, especially back here. But uh, again, I got all the legs, the back side, underneath, um, everything I could. Um, pay particular attention to underneath the fire chamber for sure. That's where these things wear out and the door, obviously. Uh, as much as you can so good view there the goal is to have a nice shiny pit that lasts a very long time so let's fire it up if you're worried about it use a propane torch or a propane burner of some kind you could probably get much cleaner results i don't have access to one of those right now so i'm going to do it the uh, tried and true method and that's with charcoal and wood So I moved my pit back over to its regular spot on the concrete. It's been raining a lot lately and the grass is really wet. So while this thing is coming up to temperature, I'm going to hit all those nooks and crannies like the wheels and the stand and, and underneath and the uh, spokes and everything um, that I was basically just too lazy to get to while I was on the grass and plus it was kind of wet. So I uh, pulled over on some uh, dry surface and uh, took care of the, the details. All right, see this uh, smoking going on right here? This is what you want to see. Just like when you're seasoning in a cast iron skillet or any uh, blackstone griddle or uh, whatnot, uh, you want to see that oil smoke. You want to see that burn off, and that's a good thing. You know, it's burning away a lot of the impurities, but it's also fusing with the metal. Definitely a good thing. Okay, guys, uh, looks like I'm well on my way to uh, well over 350 degrees internal both sides which is great taking a stab at the surface temperature it's just getting to uh, 280 right here On the edge of the fire chamber I'm over 600 degrees so I know the fire chamber is seasoning in and fusing with that oil perfectly all right guys I hope you found this video helpful it may not be necessary to go 350 all across the smoker and every nook and cranny, but I think you kind of get the idea that the oil is going to really help prolong the life of your smoker. It's going to give it a great shine, and in time, it should give you that uh, beautiful finish that cast iron is so uh, known for. And if you look around the internet, you're going to see a lot of pit manufacturers that use vegetable oil or some other version of oil on their pits usually the ones that are made from propane tanks and have a little bit of wear and tear on them already. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps uh, when you support the channel. And uh, comment down below with your preservation tips on smokers. So I hope you found this tutorial of how to oil the outside of your Yoder Wichita loaded offset smoker useful. It obviously can apply to any outdoor grill that you have where you have a, a rust concern and you want to protect it and, and go for the long haul. So again, if you like our video, be sure to subscribe, tap that bell so you don't miss a thing, and we'll see you on the next one.